start off our day by telling you that the student of the day is Tom Lonegrim because he threatened me if he wasn't going to be the student of the day. So we're going to do a little bit of factor by grouping today and show you how that can lead into factoring the quadratic trinomial. So let's just try this one here. If I look at the first two terms and see what they have in common, the greatest common factor of the first two terms is x. Left over is x minus 4. If I do that same thing with the next two terms, the common factor is 2, and I'm also left with x minus 4. So if I continue this factoring, I get that the factors are x plus 2 and x minus 4. I'm looking at basically what this whole factor and this whole factor have in common. And they have an x minus 4 in common, so what's left is x plus 2. So I went from factoring this quadratic into this answer. So I was hoping that you guys could notice what's anything from this that takes us to our answer here. And hopefully you see that the linear coefficients here are the answers for our factoring. Minus 4 ends up being minus 4 here. Plus 2 ends up being a plus 2 here. So that allows us to see the pattern between our four-term quadratic to our factored form. So if we look here, this x squared minus 2x minus 8 can be split up into x squared minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. So these two statements are equivalent. All we've done is re rewritten it. Minus 4x plus 2x is minus 2. This simplified is just that. So now, if you look, these two numbers that we've chosen to split it up with are important because negative 4 and positive 2 add to give us negative 2 here, add to give us this linear coefficient. And negative 4 and positive 2 also multiply to make this constant. So these two numbers that we've chosen are special. Not just any numbers will work to do a factor by grouping. So the numbers always add to the linear coefficient and multiply to the constant. So if you look, that same thing is true here. Positive 6 and positive 2 add to 8. And positive 6 and positive 2 multiply to 12, the constant. If we didn't have these numbers, the factor by grouping wouldn't work. So just to show you that, here's an example of a factor by grouping that doesn't work. So if the original problem is x squared plus 8x plus 15, if I say, let's split this middle 8x up, if I didn't split it up correctly into two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 15, and let's say I pick 2 and 6 instead. 2 and 6 do add to 8, but they do not multiply to 15. So let's try to do the factor by grouping. If I try to do the factor by grouping, I look for the thing that's in common with the first two terms. x is that thing. If I pull an x out, I'm left with x plus 2. Then I also try to do this process with the second two terms. The factor in common between 6x and 15 is 3. So I'm left with 2x plus 5. Now the problem is that these two terms don't have anything in common. I can't pull out this factor because these two factors aren't the same. So I'm not able to complete the factor by grouping. But now let's try to do this problem if I had split it up in the correct way. So I'm trying to think of two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to 8. So those two numbers are 3 and 5. So instead, if I wrote those two numbers instead, then this process would have been successful. So now, instead of 2 and 6, I use 3 and 5. I look for what's in common with the first two terms, and that's x. I'm left with x plus 3. Now I'm going to look for what's in common with the second two terms, and that's 5, leaving me with also with x plus 3. Now when I go to these two terms, I can see that they do have something in common. They have a factor of x plus 3 in common. So if I take the x plus 3 out, I'm left with x plus 5. And now that's our answer here. 
So let's take a polynomial and try to complete this process. Let's try to think of two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to negative 7. The way that I suggest that you do this is to think about factors of positive 10. So the things that multiply to 10 are 1 and 10, negative 1, negative 10, 2 and 5, and negative 2 and negative 5. So the two that's complete what we want, the two that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 7 are the last choice here. If you can just do this process without going through and writing all the choices, that's even better. But in case you have trouble, you can always just write down all the factors. So now that I know that my two, the two numbers that I'm looking for are negative 2 and negative 5, I have to rewrite my original quadratic with four terms, splitting this middle term up. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 5x minus 2x plus 10. The order with which you write the two middle terms doesn't matter. So if I would have written x squared minus 2x plus or minus negative 5x, it would have been the same thing. So here I'm going to take an x out of the first two, and I'm left with x minus 5. Now if I look at the second two terms, if this first term is negative, I should take out a negative number. So that number that I'm going to take out is negative 2. So I'm left here with x, because negative 2x divided by negative 2 is simply x. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. Your other clue about what this last number should be is that it should match the first one. So now here, if I complete my factor by grouping, my answer is x and minus 2, x and minus 5. So this is equivalent to this statement. It's just that this form is factored and this form is all foiled out. So let's try to do another one. So here I have x squared minus 3x minus 4. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3. Those two numbers are negative 4 and positive 1. So now I'm going to rewrite my middle term. Everything else is going to stay the same. I'm just going to split up my middle term into these two numbers, these two special numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 4x plus 1x minus 4. Now, once again, the order that you write these two middle terms doesn't matter. If I would have written x squared plus x minus 4x minus 4, the answer would have still been the same. So now if I take out an x from the first two terms using factor by grouping, I'm left with x minus 4. I can't take anything out of the second two terms, so I'm just going to take out a 1. And I'm left with x minus 4. Now my final answer is x minus 4 from these two, and I'm left with x plus 1. So the steps of factoring a quadratic trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1 are as follows. The first thing that you want to do is find two numbers that multiply to the constant term and add to the linear term. Then you rewrite the middle term with these numbers, and then you just use factor by grouping, which we learned um, yesterday in class. Then you check your work by multiplying, which is foiling. So I have your joke of the day. So a little girl came home from school and said to her mother, Mommy, today in school I was punished for something that I didn't do. The mother exclaimed, but that's terrible. I'm going to have to talk with your teacher about, about this. By the way, what is it that you didn't do? And the little girl replied, my homework. So hopefully you both don't have the same misfortune because you're all doing your homework right now. Okay, so let's do uh, just one more example. So here let's try to find two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3. So if you wanted to go through and write out all the factors of negative 10, you could. But hopefully you'll realize that those two numbers are negative 5 and 2. Now... I'm just going to rewrite my quadratic with these numbers instead. So the reason that this is allowed is because this and this are really equivalent because if I just simplify these two middle terms, I'd get the original statement back again. I'm just doing this for the process of factor by grouping. So now I'm going to take out the x, and I'm left with x minus 5. I'm going to take out the 2, and I'm left with x minus 5 as well. So my factors are just x plus 2. Notice a pattern. If you don't notice a pattern, 
Try to think about that in the next slide. So just here, let's quickly look. When I had, this was my original question, this was how I split it up, and this was my final answer. Let's do that again for the previous example. My original question, this is how I split it up, and this was my final answer. So you may be able to predict what the answer is for this one without doing that whole process. That's the goal, to make it, to make it, you have less work. So here, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 32 and add to negative 4. Those two numbers are negative 8 and 4. So let's go through this whole process. x squared minus 8x plus 4x minus 32. If you're able to see what the answer is without going through this whole process, write it down and then you can see if you were right at the end. So then I'm looking for what's in common. x has to come out of the first two terms. And 4 comes out of the second two terms. My final answer is just x plus 4 x minus 8. If you notice, these two numbers that are here are always going to be what those two numbers are that we chose to rewrite the problem in the beginning. So if you want to take the shortcut step of just going from this right to the answer of x with a negative 8 and then x with a positive 4, you, don't, you can skip all this work in the middle. So the shortcut is that the two numbers that multiply to the constant term and add to the linear term will always be the numbers in your final answer. However, this only works when the leading coefficient is 1. If the leading coefficient is other than 1, it becomes a little bit more complicated. We'll do those examples tomorrow. Please don't forget to answer the questions.